Here with me is Professor Dermot Kelleher. He's been the Dean of the Faculty of Medicine here at Imperial since October 2012. Welcome, Professor Kelleher. Thank you. Uh, today I'd like to talk to you just a little bit about how healthcare innovation and, and the role of uh, the Institute of Global Health Innovation are improving health and health inequalities uh, across the world. And in your opinion, what are the main challenges affecting global health today? Well, the biggest challenges in global health are around inequality, and that's inequality in resources and inequality in deployment of those resources. And uh, if you look at where that's most manifest in health terms, it's at the extremes of life. So. Uh, in one instance, it's maternal-fetal health, uh, where babies are suffering infectious diseases and other problems that in, in, in the early part of their lives. Uh, at the other extreme, you've got uh, the problems of aging populations and how we manage aging in, in both the developed and the developing world. Across the world, I, I think we've seen maybe a change in the paradigm around what are the major global problems. Infectious disease was previously seen as the major problem for the developing world and now the problems of non-communicable diseases, that is obesity, diabetes, hypertension, are becoming increasingly pre prevalent at a global level. So that really presents us with enormous challenges mm -hmm. and those challenges are best managed in some ways by changes in policy and changes in effective uh, healthcare delivery. And if you look at uh, the other issues that we're facing, I think, you, again, you see uh, issues relating to inequality, north-south inequality, uh, uh, and that is perhaps, uh, if we look at translational medicine and how we roll that out, we've become accustomed to uh, having access to the highest standards of healthcare discovery uh, in, in, in the north, uh, how we roll out uh, therapeutics and treatments based on novel biologicals, etc., at a global level, that's a real challenge, I think, for the future. So everything comes back to inequality, and uh, everything uh, is um, then comes back to policy, uh, both national and international. So the Institute is one of the four global institutes at Imperial College. It's hosted within the Faculty of Medicine. How do you think IGHI is contributing towards addressing health challenges? Well, I, IGHI is contributing at a number of levels. Uh, first of all, at a research level, it's contributing through the establishment of four centres which encompass everything from art and design all the way through to policy. Those centres function as, as hubs for innovation. They create new interdisciplinary thinking, not just within the Faculty of Medicine, but within the College. Beyond that, I think you look at the issues around education. And again, interdisciplinary paradigms are, are needed in education. We have to get people from the arts talking to people from surgery. And that's manifest in areas like the masters in um, health policy and the masters in uh, the uh, uh, robotics, uh, sur surgical robotics area. And uh, I would say at the other side of things, um, the uh, <coughs> issues around uh, uh, health service are going to become increasingly important as IGHI goes on, because IGHI is serving as a vehicle for new thinking around the way health service is delivered. That is absolutely crucial to us right now. We're facing increasing problems relating to uh, changes in the level of resources that are available, in the burden of disease in an aging population, and we need to think in different ways about how we manage those issues. Policy then becomes an absolutely crucial part of the, the way that we work, and in some ways in medical faculties at, a, in, at an international level, policy is perhaps the ne neglected component, but with IGHI, policy is central and it brings policy as a, into our medical faculty as, as a central issue. So uh, an, a lot done, a lot more to do, but an enormous achievements to date. So what value would you say that the Institute brings to the college as a whole? Um, I think that relates a little bit to my answer to the last question. Again, um, the college is moving to engage more with health service delivery. 
we have an academic health science center, we have an academic health science network. If you look at the conventional thinking about academic health science centers, uh, they're based on what we call the three-legged stool of research, education, and patient service. As time goes on, it's increasingly apparent that to deliver effective healthcare, you have to think beyond the teaching hospital paradigm. You have to think out into as to how you deliver health in the community. Mm -hmm. And again, so I think the changing of the paradigm from a three-legged stool to a four-legged stool is an, 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 a really stabilizing ap approach. And that means that we put policy as, as the fourth uh, leg of the stool, and we look at, again, how we can use innovation to drive efficient healthcare delivery uh, across healthcare systems rather than simply across uh, academic health science centers. And having an academic basis for that, having people who are engaged in, in questioning the way that we do things and also in measuring the way that we do things mm -hmm. and in changing the way that we do things, uh, that's absolutely crucial. Innovation is at the heart of the Institute. Why do you think innovation is important in healthcare? Well, innovation is really at the heart of everything we do at Imperial. And, you know, if you look at it from a historical perspective, um, when Fleming discovered penicillin and when uh, Feldman and Maney discovered the use of biologicals in treatment of rheumatoid arthritis, that, that was innovation. But we now need to look at, at different ways of innovating. We've gone through uh, decades where we have uh, seen the impact of innovation in technology industries. And we have to look at how we innovate in health in a completely different way. Mm -hmm. So in innovation can be part of the process of discovery, uh, but it can also be part of the way that we implement. And uh, I think one of the things that IGHI has done has been to innovate very vigorously in the innovation and implementation space. Uh, the delivery of the conferences, the uh, conference in, in London in 2012, the WISH conference in Qatar, all <coughs> represent a, a process uh, towards uh, innovating in the delivery of healthcare. So IGHI has an extraordinarily valuable role to play, both at the discovery end, uh, but also it, its role extends all the way out to the delivery of healthcare to impoverished communities in the uh, in the south and uh, in, into the way that we deliver healthcare for uh, problems of the modern world, such as obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease. IGHI believes that working collaboratively is a really important and the best way to have the biggest impact um, as a whole. Um, how can the IGHI team up with other members of the Faculty of Medicine uh, in order to collaborate on innovation in global health? Yeah, I think IGHI has already pioneered that collaborative approach mm -hmm. and we're already seeing the benefits. So if you look at uh, the area of surgical robotics, which sort of kicked off the interactions between medicine and engineering, now we see a huge increase in the amount of dialogue between medicine, engineering and the natural sciences. And a lot of that relates to the activity that, that started in, in uh, the Hamlin Centre in Surgical Robotics. Um, we're increasingly looking at uh, solutions to problems that are not based on our uh, previous paradigms of, of how we work. The concept of uh, laboratory-based science being the only way to deliver solutions. We now know that uh, information technology helps to deliver solutions. We now know that design, as <coughs> exemplified in the Helix Center approach, uh, helps to deliver new solutions and helps us to think in, in different ways. And one example of that would be the redesign of the ambulance, which was um, uh, established as a collaboration between the Royal College of Art and um, the Imperial College Faculty of Medicine and uh, Department of Surgery and Cancer. It's, it's this sort of new thinking that we need to propagate because, you know, after all, innovation is the engine of discovery and innovation is catalyzed by people thinking differently and people thinking across boundaries. Yeah. Many thanks for taking the time to be interviewed today. It's been very interesting. It's been a pleasure. Great, thank, thank you. you.